Thank you very much, Jennifer. Good morning to all of you. It's a pleasure to be here in Sofia with you today at this very important event. Uh, I'm particularly delighted because cooperation, which is the theme of this panel, is at the heart of everything that we do at the European Anti-Fraud Office. It's really written in our DNA. So it really feels almost natural for me to talk to you about that. Before we look at the challenges or the issues uh, about cooperation, let's focus for a second on our, on our enemy, on, our, on, on, on IP crime. What do we know about IP crime? We know it's a global phenomenon. We know that they reach out easily, they operate across areas of borders, jurisdictions, competence, they don't care about any of that. We have to do that, but they are very free. Uh, they're also very smart. Uh, they know, sadly often even before we know, the weaknesses in our legislation, in the way it is implemented, the loopholes, when we are not good at working together. They know that and they use it ruthlessly. We also know that they're very adaptable. We see them uh, taking advantage very quickly of any crisis. COVID was one of them. Uh, but really, any time that there is something happening, they either find a way of going around obstacles and seizing new opportunities for, uh, for their business. So what can our answer be to that? And the title of this panel is rightly cooperation, because that's the only way that we can do this. Each one of us in this room holds a precious piece of information, of, of, of a puzzle that we need to put together all the time to make sure that we are good at fighting IP crime. Uh, so in a way, we need to be as global as IP crime is. We need to team up. And, you know, this is one of the events that makes us team up. Of course, we need to continue doing this uh, even after today. What does team up mean? It means, and we see this very often in our, in our work, making sure that the different parts of the administrations, of national administrations, are capable of working together. I'm talking about the police, I'm talking about customs, I'm talking about uh, authorities whose job is to give licenses, authorizations, control, and so on. It is not always the case, but you know, we've learned painfully lessons there, so we need to continue to do that. It means also, in the European Union, making sure that we can do this across the member states of the EU. So they need to multiply that by 27. It's a big of a challenge, but we have to do it. It means also coordinating the work of the European offices, of the European departments, of the European uh, Commission, so that we can really put it all together and work harmoniously. It means also reaching out to our partners in third countries. And it means also working uh, with um, international organizations like Interpol, uh, Ameripol, WCO. It's a huge challenge. Then we need also to make sure that we are good at working together with the private sector. We've, uh, we've heard uh, already uh, a few hints of, of how important that is. We need to do that because the private sector has knowledge about the product, their product, much better than any enforcement uh, authority will ever have. And we need them at the very early stage of knowledge, and we need them when we do investigations too because, of course, we need to understand if what we are seeing, if what a custom officer is seeing on the ground is counterfeit or not. Um, I said that IP crime is very smart. Well, we need to be equally smart. And let me let's just uh, reconnect to what I was just saying about knowledge, about what we know. Uh, and again, having opportunities of sharing that knowledge from a very early stage, understanding what is going on, what could be going on, is a great asset that we need to continue exploiting. We've organized, in the context of impact, also um, knowledge building events, webinars, that are really designed to share that information, to share that knowledge out. And we, we, we also have to do this when uh, we detect and when we find fraud schemes 
they need to become the patrimony of everyone. Because the same fraud scheme, we see this very often, is exported to other countries or is happening in many countries at the same time. Um, we need to be as adaptable as IP crime. Uh, I, I looked earlier on at one of the last cases that we have done, and I just wanted to kind of share a little story with you. You may have heard about it already. With COVID, uh, of course, e-commerce has exploded, and we have already heard uh, about the importance of dealing with e-commerce when we look at IP crime. Um, the, the current most used fraud scheme in Europe, at least, which is very hard to get, is, I don't know, you may have heard about this, the Matrioska fraud scheme. It's a very nice story, you know, Matrioskas, the Russian dolls. In B2B commerce today, what happens very often is that we have consignments that no longer arrive in big containers like before, so we had the luxury of having everything packed in one thing. Now they arrive in boxes, larger boxes, that arrive at, a, at, a, at, a, at an arrival point in the European Union. From there, the big box is made into, is broken up into smaller boxes. It's already, the boxes are already in the big, in the big box. And then the medium-sized boxes are opened and there you have like smaller envelopes, smaller packages, and those are the, 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 the packages that actually will be arriving at our homes when we buy online. The net result of that is we very often, as enforcement uh, authorities, do not know who has sold the product. We don't know who's going to buy it, and sometimes we don't even know what's in it. Uh, so this is really one of the areas that we need to, uh, to focus on and uh, make sure that we adapt our legislation, we adapt the way we work, we adapt the way we cooperate together to cope, uh, to cope with that. Now we have already uh, on, the, on, the, on the good side of what is going on, we have already joined operations going on all the time. We have um, impact actions that are really very important too because they put together the two sides of the coin, the administrative violation and the organized crime Di dimension. These two never can be uh, uh, taken apart because they're really part of the same, of the same phenomenon. And we, we have, of course, investigations going on at the same time. Now, one key issue that we need to uh, uh, really foster in cooperation to make it work is trust. Trust is a, is a small word, but it's, a, it, it's really all that we need to make sure that we, we can really continue working together, that we can share, knowing that what we are sharing is not going to be a danger for the, for the work that we, that we, that we do. It's, it's, it's a plus. We need to do actions together. We need to investigate together. We need to make sure that we put everything on the table, uh, including our scarce re re resources, this was mentioned many times, uh, to, to make sure that really we go in the same direction. And an event like this is, is a trust builder, and I hope that this, and I know that this is not going to be remain uh, to remain an isolated episode. So with that, and I am really looking forward to hear uh, from the panel uh, discussion what, what challenges, what issues, what uh, suggestions we can collect to work together even better in this, in this world where uh, public uh, authorities trust each other across borders, across jurisdictions, and when we can really openly share and discuss uh, with the private sector, with the industry and the right holders. With that, I'd like to thank you again for, for listening to me and thanking very much also the UIPO, uh, who plays a really crucial role in that building that knowledge that we, we so desperately need to do our work right. Thank you very much.